Welcome back everybody to the WineSellers.com U.S. Women's Snooker Open Championship of 2003 live here at Ox Billiards in Seattle, Washington. This is going to be our last TV table match of the day. Day one here of the championship is going to be featuring Rebecca Kenna from England and Diana Schuler, who's from Germany. Diana as well is our co-tournament director. Referee Dave Daly will be at the table as he's uh, having a little fun with that blue ball to get it back on the position. To flip the coin. We're going to get ready to break off momentarily. Matt Hewitt, our other tournament director, just taking some publicity photos. It's David Burney in the booth for you. We're glad that you've tuned in all day. Feel free to share it with your friends. Let us know where you're tuning in from. If you have any comments or questions. As we said, this is our last match. There might be maybe a little bonus coverage at the end. We'll just see how some matches are playing out and how things are feeling. But uh, definitely tune us in tomorrow. Howdy, howdy. All the actions will be starting at 11 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. And the howdy howdy man is here, Mr. Christian Youngers. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, maybe maybe someone was asking for Marianne McConnell earlier, and I think we might get a chance to see her coming up here. Let's see. I think she might be part of this bonus coverage. You never know. True. Uh, I do think they might have plans. We'll have to check, obviously, with uh, Diana and uh, Matt. But I think they had plans of putting Mary on tomorrow. If we uh, see what's uh, what's happening tomorrow, what do we have there? Um, so that's 11 is when we're going to start. And, yeah, maybe we might have a double feature since... Uh, Bex kind of over here is sponsored by Ox. She is due up against Marianne McConnell. So Marianne just uh, defeated Diane Schuler, I believe, three nothing. So this is an important match for Diana. And I believe Bex has already beat Karen Lysen, who is a local player here, a great masseuse. If you're ever looking for one. Definitely, it's always a good idea after a long day on the snooker table to get a well-needed massage. So great to hear the snooker 155 putting in their support for their fellow German, Diana. Hopefully she can shake off that last uh, match defeat and just uh, buckle down and uh, get on with the business. So. Safety exchange to start here. Great point there by Bex and uh, Diana lining uh, the youngest competitor. Marissa do take her shot on the adjacent table. She's up against Louise Foster, who's come all the way over from Scotland. So that's great to see. Quite a good uh, range of players from all over the world. Definitely. Uh, Concurring that this is a world women's snooker event. Mm hmm. So, any thoughts on this one, Christian? You think is going to uh, prevail here? I know you're. Mm, I mean, I want to be impartial, but uh, we do sponsor Bex Kenna on the tour, so I might have to go with her just because uh, for loyalty's sake. I did get to hang out with Bex and Diana when we were over at uh, in Sheffield. That was a lot of fun. It was a good time. True, but you have to remember the cardinal rule. What? In I mean, the commentator box. There always is no bias. There is no bias, exactly. <laughs> so if, you, if you're putting me to the stones, I have to go with what's on paper, I guess. But then again, that's all. That's all I have. But it's sports, and we never know what can happen. I think the great actor Michael Douglas... Once was asked, oh, I, I'm not really a film guy. I'm more of a sports nut myself because, you know, you know how films are going to end. You never know <laughs> how sports are going to end. That's a good point until it, it's, until it happens. It's an argument kind of for, you know, I'm, always, I'm also kind of of that, of that realm where if a, if a sporting event already happened, I almost don't need to watch it because 
you know the result anyway, right? Yeah, as much as you try and avoid it, as much as it just yeah. feels like it's it's happened, so you just like there is something there. I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah I just but don't know how to describe it. <laughs> I feel like I usually do want to watch it though when it's something like billiards or whatever. When I'm trying to learn from it or I want to see how it actually went down, etc. Uh, but when it comes to like a basketball game, for example, I feel like I would never go back and watch the full length game, just the highlights maybe or something like that. Seems like a common thing. I don't know. It's a it's a weird thing. This this sense of live play. Oh, look at this shot. Opens up the black with the plant. Yikes. So Bex came to play. Hmm. Looks like. Well, we got a little moment while she eyes up her next shot. Just to give me an update that uh, Mink Natarak has beaten Jamie Miller 3 nothing. So that's good for uh, Mink as she's got two 3 nothing victories. And also, I must admit, she is a good purveyor of good socks. So. Oh, yeah. See so you. Best socks so far in the day, right? I don't know. There was a little bit of picture taking uh, in our little break there, so uh, maybe someone might put up uh, the picture to uh, see who has the best socks or if they can match mm -hmm, up mm -hmm. what uh, sock wear with the person. So. Well, we have another two days, so you, you definitely, I'm sure, are prepared for, for the sock game for this weekend, right? I am definitely prepared, and... Uh, if anyone's in the Seattle area, come on down. We're here all weekend long. Admission is free to get into this wonderful, wonderful event. A chance to see some really great players, mm -hmm. some up-and-coming amateur players, some players that used to be on the scene. As we've alluded to, Marianne McConnell, the Canadian player. She was the runner-up in the 1984 World Women's Championship. Might be able to get a photo with our great referee Dave Daly or Vanit Dasani. Maybe talk shop with uh, Mike Dominguez that has done great work to uh, really explode the game of snooker in Seattle. Oh, yeah. And well, there's cold drinks and good eats in the room, too. So come on down. When everything in this world seems like it's costing money, we're offering free admission. Yes, indeed. Try to slice that black and is gonna go in again. Oh wow. Almost double kissed it, like half length table to go in the middle. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Bex has a little almost kind of like Mark Allen, a short little cue action, mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. definitely gets a a lot of action on the cue ball. Yeah, I was talking to her about it earlier. She talks about uh, pulling the trigger. It's kind of like her I think she, I think she kinda cues from her back fingers in a way. It's kind of interesting. Um but, you know, a few different styles of, of grip and, and shooting, obviously, from different players. Yeah, definitely, like, there's always thought of, you know, you got to get the fundamentals down. Mm -hmm. But, I, I, you know, if a, a coach came in and you're doing things right, it might not be good textbook-wise, but if you're doing the business, then why change it? Because really the name of the game is comfortability. Yeah, definitely. And confidence, right? Exactly. A yeah. lot about confidence. Mm-hmm. It's a lonely place out there in the snooker room when you're not making the balls. Nice opportunity here. It's kind of play probably for for the red to the right of the pink spot, maybe. Got to miss the green here. And I think there's also this red might go one that's kind of amongst all the balls into the left corner. So kind of hard to say. This angle might tell us a little bit more. Yeah, she might. Yeah, I think she has one one of these reds just to the left of the pink. Must go into this left corner. Probably the highest one up. Yeah, I can draw it back for the pink into the opposite corner. Ooh. Oh, I was trying to kind of do like a stun run through, I guess, for the for the black. She could land in that zone. Yeah, you did allude to that. Uh red that was to the right of the pink that might have been the better shot yeah needed to stop uh, right there so that's what where Bex wanted to be so she's kind of opened the door a little bit here for Diana that's what you got to do with some of these more 
higher ranked players as Bex is, Bex is on the Open Pro Tour and ranked four in the world on the wor women's side. If they miss a shot, you gotta take that advantage and punish. So we'll see what the, the German can do here. I think the shot is to come play up for this zone right here. If you can get up there, what do you think? Thin off of these reds, she's going offensive maybe? Always oh, going for the shot. Oh. Yeah, it's going to leave a lot of pots on. What about the Duchess from Deutschland? I know we were talking to Diane and she didn't have a nickname, but she was wondering uh, what one could be. When you say the Duchess, um, <laughs> that thinks of, that me thinks of Alison Fisher, Duchess of Doom. Okay. Um, old school, or now a pool player on the Pro Tour, still playing Pro Pool. Um, we actually had her come to Seattle for um, the. You know, I think uh, first time we hosted ever the Northwest Cup, Team Oregon versus Team Washington. Uh, mm. She was the commentator here in town, which was a lot of fun. She had a clinic as well. A lot of history and experience there from Allison Fisher. Also a long time snooker player as well from a while back before she came to the States and played pool here. Didn't have enough there. Yeah, the women's game was a little bit uh, different back there. As uh, I think, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. Allison might have come in just just when the tobacco sponsors might have pulled out. Because I know that talking to Matt Hewitt, that there was you know strong support, and then obviously England came around that well we now can't have tobacco companies sporting our events, oh, okay. and that really hurt. Uh, the woman's side that Got dropped it. a lot of sponsorship money that came out. I wasn't aware of that tidbit there of history. Yeah, you know, in the snooker room, you got to keep your eyes and ears open for anything that could be uh, interesting. As uh, oh, look at this shot here. Screw back. Get on this pink. No, get on this red into the right corner. Maybe. Does it go? Yeah, there's a path. And Regal wants his soul. Take my soul, Diana. <laughs> All right. Not to pass that along to Diana when she's yeah. finished up her match here. Yeah, this red passes. I think if she can screw off of the other red cushion out. No, she's not taking it, it looks like. She's going to take the red up table. Maybe play a safety shot. Oh. Pull the trigger in that one too. It's gonna settle for the middle pocket. Oh wow. This might be a bit of trouble here. It's a delicate shot. Bex could just possibly mm. it's tough because I don't think she's got the angle to just stun into that red first and get behind the brown, so she manages to come back a little bit, but very delicately. Oh, went for the pot. Look at this. Wow. What a pot that was. Mm -hmm. I was thinking the safety like like what you were saying, but Yeah, good two way shot there. You know, if she had missed it, yeah. she's not leaving Diana an easy opener, so and now with the black on the spot there, this is a good opportunity for a healthy contribution. For Bex. Bex, who actually has her own shop out there in Yorkshire, back in England. I have yet to pay a visit to her shop, but I see some pictures and chatting with her. It looks like she's doing mm -hmm. quite well with the business. Not bad for you know a snooker player if you have a little downtime and not many customers coming in to buy a queue. Hey, there's a table there I can get a little practice on. Oh, definitely. Mm. Oh, 
just overcut that. Almost looked like she kind of threw her arm a little bit. Cause it's it's kind of one of those weird shots where your body knows that you're going to miss it, but you got to take the shot. Interesting situation. Well, thanks, Tom, for uh, chiming in about Beck's shop over there. It was quite a brilliant shot. And it's nice to see you're tuning in as well, Javier Venezuela, who played uh, in this year's Seattle Snooker Open. She doesn't. He, I think Leif Javier plays with a pool here. He's got more yeah. of a bigger tip, of maybe a 13 millimeter. Yeah, he's one of the pool players that have we've convinced and has now fallen in love with the sport. It seems right. Uh, Dynamite or Christian, you and the team converting these pool players into the big <laughs> game. Yeah, he was one of the one of the pool players. I think him and Clay Belvoir, a few of them hadn't really ever played snooker much, uh, but uh, said, "Hey, I like the challenge. It looks like a fun game. Let's try it out." And did pretty well from what I imagine. From what I, me what I remember, sorry. Um, I think Javier almost got out of his group. I think he was. Did he play against Clay, maybe? Or they, they might have been in the same group, actually, now that I think of it. Clay, I think, lost to the world. Or to the eventual champion. Something like that. So the Kraken has extended its tentacles and hey, pulled there you go. them in. Yeah. <laughs> Dave Priest asking, is one of the guys commentating the guy off the nine ball? Oh, okay, Javier, you both got out of the group. Yeah, okay, I, re I remember that you guys played each other and you guys got out of the group stage and then played in the knockout, and I think, yeah, I think Clay lost to the eventual champion, Varun, and then I don't remember who Javier played. But, uh, is one of the guys commentating the guy off the nine ball podcast? What's the... What's the nine ball podcast? I don't know what... what uh, that um, about. would not be me, uh, Dave. Uh, that's David Bernick t talking to you right now, along here with Christian Youngers. But uh, the only time I've really been on a podcast is when Dave Hendon has read out my emails from the Snooker Scene podcast. Mm. So you might remember with my uh, famous question to all Snooker players, and I leave it up to the viewing audience as well. Who wins in a Snooker match, Christian? Lee Marvin or Jack Palance? I don't know. <laughs> Do you even know who they are? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Two great American actors. You might remember Jack Palance doing the one-arm push-up when he won the Oscar for City Slickers. And oh. Lee Marvin won an Oscar for Cat Ballou. Um, I don't think, I don't know if they ever played snooker. But uh, I know the, uh, there's evidence of them playing pool as... Jack Plants was in a movie, I think, called To Kill a Dragon. Okay. And there was some pool in that movie, and there is a shot of Lee Marvin on the internet of him playing pool at the Playboy Mansion. Oh, wow, okay. So, it's just cool. a hypothetical thing, and just, you know, yeah. a kind of a, a pub discussion, shall we say, if, you know, <laughs> the conversation dries up. You're saying it's a twi trick question, then, huh? Never a trick question, it's just a, more of an opinion question, a, a daydreaming question. Gotcha. Oh, okay, Javier, yeah. The the snooker open. Yeah, you were in the qualifier. You lost to Charlie in the semifinals. That's right, that's right. Yeah, we saw you in the qualifier and in the open. Yeah, the open was tough field for sure. I remember that. Okay, the other guy, not Dave, so that'll be, that'll be me, is what it sounds like he's talking. It sounds <laughs> like talking I, you. I'm... Christian, the that sounds like the podcast guy. Dave Hendon's podcast is superb, isn't it, guys? I never actually listened to Dave Hendon's podcast. You have not listened to the Snooker Scene podcast? Oh, actually, I did. No, we we were referenced in it one time, I think. Yeah, yeah uh, at uh, Ox Billiards. Yeah, we, I think I listened to that episode. Mm -hmm. It was the linked. Who was it that linked it? Um, Snooker. Who was it? He's on YouTube. He's a guy commenting on YouTube a lot. We get to meet him, or I get to see him uh, here today, but an active viewer of ours. He also, I think, posted a video about, uh, about I think, Seattle Open last year, maybe? Something like that. Sounds familiar. It'll come to me. True. We got all weekend, so uh, maybe give it some context. <laughs> Just don't blurt out a name at random. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was that guy. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like this pink's going to be going down. 
has a f maybe a couple reds. These reds are kind of clustered up here. Is she stun over enough? Develop it a bit. Oh wow, she tried. I wonder if Diana's showing a little bit of her pool side. Now she's an accomplished pool player. And a lot of pool play players do like to uh, slam that ball into the back of the pocket just to hear the resin ball hit that leather, that slapping sound. Really mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Tingle to the ears. But I think more of a snooker player, that little jingle of the netting is uh, more enticing. Yeah, or maybe yeah, that's the fair. <laughs> back of the pocket leather smack. I like that one a lot. Mm -hmm. It's because you know how clean you hit it, you know? Yeah. Oh, Snooker155 saying he checked the page that, uh, yeah, he sh yeah, we saw that Karen Core had entered into the tournament and then she wasn't in the list anymore. Do we know what happened? Um, I think she must have withdrawn later, but uh, I did hear that, yeah, Karen Core had signed up at one point, a longtime pool player. Um, but uh, I don't know what the situation was, and I guess uh, she wasn't able to make it, it seems. Unfortunately, it would have been really cool to see her out here on the bays. We've got to get a we've got to get a Duchess of Doom, Allison Fisher and Karen Core rematch, but on the Green Bays. What do you think about that? That'd be a battle for the ages. I feel like. True. Mm, Dave, okay, so Dave's saying that Dave Hennon loves his North American correspondence. <laughs> yes, sir. Gotta love it. Oh, I think I'm off on the score here. Sure, I think I made his day or his year or his life last year when I saw him at the Crucible and handed him off one of our programs from our BC Open and he turned to it. I think the second to last page saw that there was a crossword and I think Clue 21 was the Snooker Scene podcast host. He kind of fell out of his chair when he saw that. He's like, hey, that's me. <laughs> My life's ambition has come to fruition. And there you go. So... Oh, Javier saying that Daniel certainly also uses a pool cue in the open event. Yeah, he will use one. I think, I think the third was also clay. I think three, maybe maybe a fourth person too. I don't remember, but there were a few people using the the good old pool cue on the snooker snooker cloth. And I and I always say, you know, especially if you're new to the game, honestly, go with what's more comfortable for you. Because as we know, more often than not, being comfortable and confident has a lot more to do with success um, than necessarily the equipment you're playing with. You know. Yeah, Javier, I, I agree. I think next year, try out the snooker queue and get some more snooker tournaments for sure. I mean, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely be planning to host some more, another qualifier again for this year's, or I guess next year's uh, Seattle Open again, and uh, hopefully have the snooker league start up again in the fall here and do some other things. Yeah. Just a little early or mid, mid point in this first frame. It's three frames we're playing. They play all three. It's not a best of three. So every frame is important. I believe Bex was a 3 nothing victory in her first match. That's a great long pot there. And so if she can take this match 3 nothing, that's looking really good to put herself into the quarterfinal. She was last year's runner-up to Jamie Hunter. Wanting to place highly in this tournament, maybe even lift the silverware come Sunday night as she is sponsored by this great room, Ox mm -hmm. Billiards, here in Seattle. Javier asking, is anyone using a pool cue in this event? I believe we might have someone, I think two people might be using pool cues. Is Marianne McConnell using one? I think she might be. Last I saw, and then who else? I can't tell. I want to say there's two people using pool cues in this event, uh, from what I saw earlier. Could be wrong. Yeah, we might have to get back to you on that question. I don't think Marianne is using the pool cue just because I know she plays a lot of pool now, a very accomplished pool player, but this is the game where she started. So she did start mm. playing snooker for so many years. I think she was saying upwards of 20 years she was playing snooker wow. before she even saw an eight ball table. Wow. Yeah, it's incredible. 
Uh, James Brinson. I'm not sure, actually. Uh, that's a good question. It might be a sign-in feature. Oh, maybe. You might have Who to knows? sign into your YouTube account to make comments. Just a qu- just a, an idea. Mm-hmm. But we're glad that you found us on uh, Facebook, and you can fire on any co- comment or question to us there. We're also on Twitch as well, so we are getting comments from from YouTube too. So I believe it is working. So this there on the pink from Bex Kenna does leave this red available. Not an easy color to play for unless you screw this all the way back. Does she have the angle to come across? Oh, she's going to take this red instead. Okay. Taking red into the middle, screw back for the blue. Well, there might be an angle to just stun down for the black. Or go forward, yeah, for the black. But with this red, there is a lot more colors here. Oh, time to stretch. <laughs> I think she wanted to get... Yeah, the body language tells you all there. Get over all is and then she kind of just has a little smirk to herself here, just being like, ah, oh, that's not where I want it to be. Pulling out the redwoods, it looks like. Yeah, taking this blue on. Has a chance to get, if you pick off some of these reds, I think a break is definitely on here. Pink is away is the only thing. Well, that's definitely probably why she took that red that was close to the yellow. Might have been a little bit more difficult of a shot than that red to the middle pocket that we were talking about. But sometimes you have to do that in this game. Just take that slightly more difficult red to uh, mm -hmm. put yourself in position for a higher break. As well, just need a little bit more pace there. but mm, Yeah, I was thinking about going forward one rail, but she decided to go stun with two cushions out. Just came a little bit short of pace, but still a valid option. Javier asking, is there a list of the players online somewhere? Yeah, there is a there is a description link in the chat, or I think in the YouTube and Facebook descriptions on the video, but uh, snookerscores.net is the uh, URL you want to go to and search for the uh, U.S. Open, U.S. Women's Snooker Open. Take this on into the corner. What do we think? Just lining up with a high ball, it looks like. Playing it forward in case. Good ball position. Mm -hmm. That was tricky tough shot. shot. Yeah, but nice effort. Yeah, I wonder maybe just drawing that same ball and coming behind the brown. Might have not been an option. This is a, a tricky cut here for Bex into the side pocket, but it's definitely in her wheelhouse of making it. Oh, but oh. for the green pocket. Wow. Yeah. But a good cue ball. The miss. Yeah, I think that looks actually much more uh, intelligent shot than going into the side. It was tricky, and if she was missed it, she's probably going to leave that red near the blue mm -hmm. for Diana, so taking that longer pot into the green pocket with the red and screwing back just bringing it onto the top cushion it's a lot more sensible shot that's why the players are on the table and I'm up here just calling the shots as best I can mm, I see someone in the chat saying that we have the subtitle below as pool for the, for the uh, twitch stream I think I can fix that no problem That people Feel start getting their uh, swing trunks. Can you put snooker or pool so we can kind of like, oh, what's this pool thing? Wait, this isn't pool. This is snooker. Mm -hmm. Why am I so transfixed by this game? I, I forget this pool. <laughs> yeah, game. maybe we should put it for pool so people <laughs> just start to listen, tune in, right? All right, should be up to date. Rich, Rich Sunuk in the Twitch chat. So 43 on the table, and uh, Diana Schuler has a one-point advantage in this first frame over Bex Kenna. This red is on, though, to the middle. She's definitely taking it on, playing for black. Uh, a little bit too much follow. Yeah, just not fun, <laughs> shall we say, that shot. 
Yeah, I think maybe a little bit more stun into it would have gotten a slightly farther line. Is there a safety on here though? Would you... Should we maybe play off the left edge of this and play behind the blue? Or do you take the pot on, maybe the brown? Since you don't have hampered queuing. Yellow I don't think makes sense because you're gonna leave the pot to the middle. Hampered queuing. Sticking the pink on maybe? Maybe yeah, with some top left, and that just might scoot it behind the green. Okay. Or the brown. Yeah, or it kind of came. Didn't get either. Yeah. Twixt in between. There's a gap there for Diana. So this might be the right angle too for a uh, roll-up safety, maybe on the blue. Yep. So she's playing. Yep. Oh, quite excellent. nicely. Yeah, and look at this too. Getting close to the black, so you take away one side of the kicking area. R risk the chance of hitting the black on the foul. Oh, I see. It's Rich Sun from Sunderland in UK. So Rich Sun UK. Very cool. So Beck's yeah. in a little bit of trouble here. I believe they're playing two putbacks. You are correct, but we'll see if that oh. goes back. I don't think it's going to put him back. Her back, my apologies. Yeah, I probably wouldn't because there's a pretty decent chance of hitting this ball after calibrating from the first shot. Should be mm -hmm. an easy seven points. Well, granted, nothing is easy on these tables, that's for sure. <laughs> that's true, but uh, an easy starter here for Diana. Say a less difficult one. I mean, you prefer this over whatever might might happen if you, you know, happen to hit it in a certain way, so. Probably take black here, go one cushion, the yellow. Yeah, as we all know, after uh, the last color is potted, after the red, they'll be on to the yellow. That's the first color you have to get when it comes down to the colors, followed by the green, brown, blue, pink. And if you still need it, the black can be a, a deciding ball and make it really exciting. Oh yeah, it's stunned over. Okay. Great stroke in that one. Get it across. Much less angle than I, th than I thought it was. Eight. So the clearance is on here. This is a tough shot though. This is probably the toughest part of the frame. Just going to clear up. Yeah. A thought here. Does she thin cut it into the yellow pocket? Or does she hit it on the bulk side okay. and double it back into the middle pocket where she's shooting from. Hmm. Looks like she's going to thinly cut it. Cause doubling into the corner is really tough. Just maybe going to take the medicine and oh, okay. this looks good. Safety this way. It's going to get up on the brown. Oh, that looks really wow. That might be just a thin snick for Bex. I think so. I think just barely. Yeah, that was inches away from perfection for Diana. Yeah, nice hit there from Bex. Not a big area to play for, but kind of laid up for the natural double. And look at this. Is it going to leak out? Oh, I think there's a line. Yeah, I think this. Just maybe another little thin spot there. Richard Parker is the same, same person over on Twitch. <laughs> he just enjoys that we're following the chat. Good engagement. Yeah, I mean, there's always fun to talk to folks in the chat. A lot of folks tuning in from all over the world, it seems, so very cool. Mm -hmm. It keeps it quite lively and active in here as much as, you know, we're all focused on this great game of snooker it's nice to feel that we can reach out and communicate with all you fans out there because we know you love the game just as much as we do and some of you might be seasoned vets some of you might be newcomers that just stumbled across this so you know, if there's any questions ask us sometimes we do know why a player made a certain shot sometimes it's a mystery to us as well reach out some might say reach out and touch faith
Dave Priest posing a question over on Facebook saying, best lady player ever? Ooh. The goat? I don't know. That's a tough one, yeah. The pool goat is definitely Allison Fisher in terms of the lady side. And Allison was in the bad snooker player as well, so... Mm -hmm. She's got an argument possibly for both. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously some people can say Rianne could be the best player ever. Rianne Evans? Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe. But I think, actually thinking about it, I think Rianne was part of that world where the tobacco sponsors went away. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the standard might have dropped a little bit. Mm, okay. okay. Not to discredit anything from Rianne. Mm-hmm. But, but when, you, when you say tobacco sponsors clearing out, you mean basically that the, uh, the effect of that was that the prize money basically drastically dropped in terms of the, the tour, et cetera? Yeah, a lot of the, the finances and stuff like that. Got and it. I think even the open tour, the pro tour, took a little hit, obviously, from it, uh -huh. but they were able to somewhat recovery. Okay. Um, Right, Nathan Todd saying Rian Evans. I guess some people saying Rian Evans. Interesting. Because, like, you look at it now, like, in the past five years, there's been, you know, multiple or different world champions mm -hmm. in the women's game. There's Sarah Pohn, um, Rian Evans, obviously, Anyi, Mink, so. Yeah. I mean, the part that I'm interested in, too, though, is that uh, all these players, their career's not over yet, so this could be a different. Uh, it could be a lot more different answers maybe five, ten years from now. It depends. Mm -hmm. Like looking at this event, you know, there's some I think, you know, I'm not going to, there's some that are just here for the love of the game, but there's some that de definitely take it very seriously and are the high-ranked players. And to know who's going to win this event between those high-ranked players, your guess is as good as mine. Who's just going to find some good form and find a hot streak, probably, and maybe just get a little bit of roll of the balls? And hey, I might even eat my words here in the commentator booth, and some amateur might just kind of hit some good luck and just uh, shock the world. Mm -hmm. Let's see if the attempt here. I think it's going to leak out a bit. This green. Diane is fully snookered here. Yeah, is snooker one five five. Oh, um, this is one of those angles where I almost feel like chance is still there. I guess we, if we have a chance, quickly we can try to measure. No, I'm I'm gonna say that she can see it. Definitely, all day. Oh yeah. It's nice when I can draw on the screen. <laughs> what, are, what are straight lines? Yeah, Snooker155 saying thinks that Mink and Bai Yu Lu have a great chance to become the greatest players. Both have a lot of talent and are still very young. And, uh. Yeah, the truth always wins oof. is actually correct. Yeah, Allison Fisher, there wasn't a lot of money in the women's game, so she got a little bit of frustrated. I wouldn't be surprised back then that uh, the pro open circuit was like, what, a woman? But, uh, you know, these times change, and it's great to see that there are some women on to the pro tour right now. That's Bex Kenna, who's in this match, as well as Mink. Bex a little behind here. Diana has kind of shaken off that uh, whitewash loss to Marianne McConnell. This will do good for her confidence if she can uh, she can take two or three right here. She'll be quite happy with that and make it a very important matchup uh, tomorrow. If she battles Seattle's own Karen Lyson. So. to 
risk anything. That brown is her frame ball, as there's 20 in it, with 22 on the table. So we might have a little safety exchange here. Snooker. It's a good response there by Diana. All right, what just a little bit of the brown poking out there. I don't think the potting angle is there. Just enough at least that Bex can hit it. She might uh, try a cross double, get into the green pocket. Oh, there could have been an angle there. Yeah, I think the pot was on. This is it going to settle on the cushion maybe? Oh, yep. Might see a safety attempt here behind the black. Alison Fisher, the Duchess of Doom, superb pool player. Truth always wins. We are in Ox Billiards in Seattle, Washington, up in the Evergreen State. We've got four star tables. Great facilities here as well. They have one Chinese eight ball table and about, looks like, eight Rasson pool tables. A real nice kind of industrial feel in the room. There's a lot of wood, steel, cement. Definitely nice and conducive to a, a billiard player as it's uh, down in the darkness in the basement from the outside world. We're not going to get a suntan in here, maybe just a tan from the bright lights that are under the table. Another safety attempt. Or was it, sorry, was that a pot? I believe it was safety. Another safety here. Yeah. Diana holds her mouth there. She knows she hit that is the wee bit thin. This might be three cushions into the side, possibly here for her Bex. Doesn't have a chance. That's so a little bit long. It's left a long pot though. Just starts getting a little dicey here, I think. Where it makes this green, it feels like it's probably going to clear up here. Don't know. That, yeah, it's not snookers required yet. 20 point the difference. 22 remaining, so... Brown the frame ball for Diana. Any pot, really, frame ball for Diana, so... She's really focusing on trying to pop this brown. Or get a devilishly nasty snooker. Let's throw the angle to just hit off that red on the left side. Push it past the black to come off the cushion and slowly roll your cue ball to get behind the blue. Okay. Yeah, it looks pretty on. close. Might have to go off the long rail with the cue ball to get behind the blue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she knows this is a big frame. Even more left side and just kind of... It's going to get behind... Oh, just so a little bit close. Long. So close. The speed looked perfect. I think the line was just a bit off. Yeah, this is ultra thin cut. To that middle pocket and she does have to worry about the green pocket for the in and off. No, she doesn't go yeah. for that, I don't think, at all. Smart play there, yeah. It's going to roll far enough, or is it going to lay up for this pocket? Oh, it's on for Diana. It's long. This is a chance, for sure. It's definitely about uh, 11 feet, 9 inches of uh, real estate she has to deal with if she wants to put this brown in the bottom of the pocket. Oh, just 
cut it too thick. Mm -hmm. And the pink, I don't think, has come to the rescue because I think there's a path and the angle is there to put this brown into the green pocket. If Bex is able to run out here, that's really going to, or even just steal this frame from Diane, it's really going to hurt. Yeah, it'll be quite the steal, actually. Temple of Pool asking, so no rail contact required in Snooker. Yes, that is correct. It's one of the big rule differences from Pool and Snooker. Is that uh, you simply need to make contact with the ball that is on, not hit a rail after contact. Oh, it sounds like Bayou is going to be playing on the Q Tour this season. Sounds like a... Uh, would be a good good battlefield for her. Oh, Diana. Brown is just getting a little pesky, but... Leaving a chance. Yeah, natural angle is going to bring the cue ball down table. Doesn't really have to do a lot with it. Maybe just a little bit below center. And she can kind of just float her cue ball down to the blue. She's done, but she needs the brown. Oh. There's two sides to every story and two sides to every shot. Uh, I think actually Ox Billiards is on Broadway and Pike here in Capitol Hill in Seattle, Washington. That's a nice brown. Greatly shaped onto the blue. See, Diane had a little bit more skip in her step when that brown dropped and to get her down on the blue. There's a, now Bex does need one snooker. Uh, now she needs another. Yeah, so I think this is too much to overcome now, it looks like. Yeah, 29 in it and 13 on the table, so... That's three snookers. That's... That's nicely done. That can... Sees that frame, so... A little subtle fist pump there by Dan, and she really needed that. Just kind of a little bit deflated, as I noticed after her last match. But uh, she's able to take that first frame over Bex Kenner, and we'll be right back with frame two action. And we're back with the WineCellars.com U.S. Women's Snooker Open Championship of 2023 live at Ox Billiards in Seattle, Washington. David Burney is in the booth with you, commenting all day long on this great snooker action in this great tournament. Our co-tournament director, fresh off that frame one victory, Diana Schuler, set to break off.
So we'll see how X kind of can respond. Every frame is important here. They're playing all three frames. Sometimes in some tournaments there's just uh, a best of three where they would just play t if a winner needs to get two. There, by Diana. Excuse me. Just gonna black nice and close to the top right corner pocket. All right. Yeah. Thanks, SC Manhattan. <coughs> I agree. I think we are in downtown Seattle, not on whatever that street was, but. Uh, on Pike and Broadway. Come check us out. Tired. Long day. Yeah, it's definitely nice that for Diana that she can have Matt Hewitt here, who does a lot of great work with uh, the WPBSA and mm -hmm. the WWS. Uh, I'm not sure, Christian, if you have ever ran a tournament and played in a tournament. It's uh, not a lot of fun if you don't have... Uh, you know, a Robin to your Batman, mm -hmm. shall we say. Oh, definitely. No, I have been in that boat. Much smaller scale than this. It was, it was for pool tournaments. But, uh, yeah, I can understand, especially going back and forth and getting all the questions being asked and then able to kind of keep track of uh, certain things. Or, uh, you know, you feel like your your brain is on many different uh, cylinders and context, which is constantly. And sometimes it can be hard to come and focus in on your match. But... Uh, I think it helps that she's kind of been going back-to-back -back matches now. So, she just finished a match with uh, Marian McConnell, and now he's playing Bex. So oh, whoa, what? Oh, my. Stop before I did. <laughs> unlucky. That's so unlucky. Oh, yikes. Just when the Porsche was coming out of the garage and she was ready to take it for a Sunday drive, the fuzz pulled her over and said that <laughs> red's going on down as well as the black so yikes a little unfortunate there and just looking around the room it looks like Kathy Stanley and uh, Marion Poole are tied 1-1 uh, Marion McConnell and Karen Listen are in their first frame and they're 32-31 looking like they're on the colors and our other match it's kind of just a little blocked from our view but check out snookerscores.net for all the updated scoring on this great tournament it's day one We've got two more days to go tomorrow we'll be wrapping up the round robin and then starting the corner finals leading up to the semifinals and finals to come on championship sunday oh this is a good snooker here cover those red on the left uh, i guess yeah pretty pretty straightforward Escape on one side is the only thing here. Thought I was going to hug to this green. Looked, looks like this base just keeps rolling and rolling and rolling. Yes, I do remember back at well, that lovely club down at Pioneer Square Bays uh, when mm -hmm. Mike first opened it up way back on February 29th, 2020. <laughs> He and I were just having yep. a little match as uh, everything was getting warmed up for the night, and I was surprised. I thought my cue ball would stop, but it kept rolling for another six inches. So these are Oof. definitely excellent tables and playing in great conditions. They've just been refitted by the great Simon Barker. So I think he's probably been on every continent in this world and done a table and. nicely to the bulk cushion.
Uh, winner's prize money. I don't actually know what the amount is. I believe the total prize pool is is 10,000. And there are some prizes for high break and centuries and 147s in the final. Oh, where's this cue ball going to end up? Awfully far away. Yes, Jason and Diana of WineCellars.com have really spruced up the pot in this tournament. Oh, yeah. They are uh, dishing out some money for a high break prize throughout the tournament. And then we've heard that in the final, if there is any century, they will be play paying that player $500 for that century. And now if there's a 147, a maximum, which uh, some players have been uh, almost on the right track here in this tournament so far, but a maximum, which is Snooker's greatest feat in the final, will net that player $5,000. It's better than the Pro Tour. I think so, actually. Yeah. I think a lot of pro players have complained why isn't there uh, a maximum prize. As much as they are happening a lot mm -hmm. more frequently than they used to, uh, you should still be awarded for greatness. That's oh, for sure. 37 pots in a row. That's controlling the cue ball to the highest standard because you're jumping around, potting in reds and blacks. And now we've all seen... A Probably a fair amount of 147s probably look back on YouTube. And, you know, once in a while there's one that might have a few fluke shots in there. Mm -hmm. um, but you can't be fluking everything. You have to be really in control. And then after all those 15 reds go down accompanied by the black, you've got to run the colors. So it's no easy feat. Ah, okay. 3,500 for a winner. Runner up 2,250. Thanks, Snooker 155. I think it might have been on the website somewhere. Looks like both these reds on. Just gonna take the one instead over to this right corner pocket, it looks like. Yeah, no. Thinking twice, I guess. Because maybe, you know, with that right that you're saying in the open, that goes to the quite easy, nice straight in shots. You guys gotta be concerned about negotiating with that red that's near the cushion, but. Yeah, so I like you gotta it. play like a dead on screw shot just to get back on the for the black. The, the yeah. margin for error is so large there where... Exactly. I think just with this... Uh, this is a nice little stun shot and that's it, right? Let's kind of hold the ball there. And drift over to the right. Or she might be taking that red close and be on the pink, but I don't think the pink packs is that red. Yeah, that bottom of the two reds there that we're looking at. Yeah, beautiful shot there. Uh, it's going to be a little bit hampered on this queuing, I think. Still, this is a shot you'd, you'd like to take on, I think. I think so, yeah. Like, as, as first she was lining up that one open red and just, just looking at the area where she needed to land was so small, whereas that last rest shot that she played greatly, there's a little bit more leeway. She would be able to... Uh, and that's what you're kind of looking for. It's nice to be in an area and have some flexibility there rather than the pinpoint on, like, a, a place. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, look at that shot. Wow. From that angle, did really well to hold the ball with that type of stun. Nice shot there. So Dave over on Facebook asking, what's the best, a 147 hole-in-one perfect 10-pin bowling score or a 9-darter wow. darts? The 300 in bowling. Usually they talk about a 147, a hole-in-one, and a 9-darter darter and darts. This oh. is a chance for a break here. That's always a good, uh, obviously, pub debate talk. And I guess, how many shots is it in a 10-pin perfect match? It's what, it's um, nine frames. you got to strike in each one there, and then and you've got to get three strikes. Three in the last, yeah. So that's what, 12 shots right there. It'll be 13? No. Yeah, 12. 12 perfect shots 12 with shots. the changing of the oil, etc. So 12 I know, shots I know what my answer is, but uh, I'll wait for people to see what people say in the chat. I and then I'll bring my arguments to the table. Well, I'll start it off. And being uh, golf was the first game I had before this. Mm -hmm. And there is definitely a lot of variables in a hole-in-one. There's wind. There's length. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's a lot of 
hills and kicks and you can kind of uh, it can be kind of lucky like someone mm -hmm. could have complete luck not have any skill in golf and get a hole in one mm -hmm. so I'm sorry we're going to have to take golf off the list it's also a single event right it's a single stroke a single swing a single event mm -hmm. so like you said luck has a lot to do with it in, in some respects right yeah a nine uh, nine darter well the uh, dartboard isn't moving at all mm -hmm. it's in the exact same position you're shooting pretty much from the exact same line uh -huh. and it's nine shots so sorry we got to take the nine daughter out of the way i think so too same thing it's like less less events and the thing is the same in the same static position so it's kind of like shooting you know a long blue seven times in a row or nine times in a row mm -hmm. something like that right and then so 10 pin bowling as we've alluded to Ooh, i almost flipped in there Wow, but this fluker here. The brown has come to her rescue. The fluka snooker. And so then 12 shots. The bowling alley is pretty much the same. It's pretty basic. It's the same kind of shot. Yes, there is taking. an argument, though, in bowling that the fact that the oil pattern is changing every shot. So there Just is... because of the impact of the ball on the lane? Exactly. So the ball rolls on the lane and there is you know a certain oil pattern that that uh starts off um you know the the game when you're bowling but uh, it does change over time and as oil gets pushed around you need to know how it adapts and what it what effect it causes for the next shot so there is a difference in every shot you are taking granted it is only 12 shots you take True. and you also can get pretty lucky on bowling shots where you didn't really actually hit the pins very well and still get the strike in some cases right Mm -hmm. certain you know area in the pocket where you're supposed to hit and that's supposed to make it or whatever uh, but yeah I think it's just the sheer number of attempts it's 12 some of them are mostly the same some of them are pretty a little bit different towards the end maybe but I'd still I don't know so then that leads us to the game of snooker that we're watching right now as the final one and that requires 36 pots yeah and as much as snooker players would love to have the same shots over and over and over again mm -hmm. it just doesn't happen and you need to have control of that cue ball granted there's a little bit of control with the bowling ball mm -hmm. a little but the same lineup same area same mm -hmm. kind of shot yeah I think uh, I think we're all in agreement here but then again this is a snooker <laughs> live stream so you probably won't find much disagreement but I think uh, I think uh, most folks in the chat agree that 147 is the hardest Mm -hmm. and so yeah that's uh, my long winded explanation of what my, my uh, <laughs> you're unbiased my, my unbiased I tried to be fair <laughs> to all sports there trying uh, to okay. you know bring them out and that's oh, a nice little shot nice by box. wow wiped its feet before it went down in the drain yeah I think that's also a good point on YouTube saying that the, the debate can be decided by also, there's a f you know players who have four-year careers and have you know handful of one four sevens. The best player in the all time has what in the teens worth number of one four sevens, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas how often do is a perfect you know bowling strike situation happen? A lot probably a lot more common as well. I guess uh, I'd like to see other arguments uh, in in the discussion, but I think you could say that the. Uh, the amount of mechanics required to do a single snooker shot is a little bit simpler than doing a bowling shot. Maybe it doesn't require as much of the entire mm -hmm. body in terms of one continual motion as a snooker shot. Snooker shot kind of is isolated to, you know, once you plant your legs down, it's kind of isolated to the sort of the upper body in a, in a way. So maybe the less complicated motion, similar to like a golf swing, is a little bit uh, more difficult. So. I imagine there could be something equivalent in golf where you're not necessarily talking about a single hole in one, but maybe, you know, um, an mm -hmm. X over X under par type situation. But the problem with that is that every golf course is different, right? So you're going to get some massively, you know, low scores on cer certain golf courses, but so will everyone else in a sense, right? And. Um. You know, we talk about a hole-in-one. Now, a hole-in-one is usually on a par three. There's not been many hole-in-ones on par fours. 
mm-hmm. and yet those power fours would be short power fours, probably mm-hmm. 300 yards. Probably, yeah. And, you know, to equate the longest par three, I think you could call probably maybe 250 yards. Okay. I'm not sure exactly what the regulations are when the par three mm. turns into par four for the yardage. But why aren't we talking oh. about albatrosses? You know, there's a par five that I think starts at maybe 500 yards, and you finish that hole in two shots. Oh, wow. Oh, look at that pot. Wow. So. I just like the fact that you're saying yards instead of meters. <laughs> <laughs> we North got them. Amer- North American golf. Uh, I'm, I'm not a Brit, so uh, if uh, I was British, I'm pretty sure we'd be calling this hole. In Don't they still use meters. yards, though, in, in, in golf? They do, yes, definitely. Yeah, over uh, there. The yardage, or th- I think they categorize it as meters, but maybe just to bring in uh, the... Uh, the high viewership and stuff like that. We'll okay. just go with uh, yardage. Got it. So this is a good comeback here for Bex to yeah. draw this match. She's not out of the woods just yet. Just making the stringing a few of these breaks together, kind of like a, you know, yeah. 14, 14, 16, kind of double digit breaks continuously, kind of netting her a big lead in this one. 50 point lead, it looks like. And Oh, that blue, I think, was frame ball, wasn't it? 35, 43, 51. Yeah, so frame ball. Yeah, 49 on in it. Missed. And 51 on the table. So Diana still has a chance to get back. Unfortunately, the reds are in a little tough position to get back for the black, which she needs. She can't afford She's to take blacks with all these reds, but is a good starting point but as you say you know sometimes you don't have to get it all in one visit that's something that sometimes the amateur should find out that you don't need to be a hero you don't want you don't have to get right back in the match if you just made these short little breaks that you alluded to that bex was making you know the 14s the 16s maybe a little 20 in there and then running and hiding slowly and slowly you're gonna creep up on the scoreboard Thinking on this thin black. It's a tough shot. Oh, wow. Almost had it, yeah. A chance for a. Might not like her next shot at the table next. No. This is uh, definitely in the land of Snookerville. She's. Hmm, they change her mind. She didn't play the red. Yeah, she might have had to use the rest there, and that might have just made her a little bit uncomfortable. Maybe the fact that you're pushing this red up table towards the other one um, helps make this snooker easier if you're trying to play behind the pink. I think this red is covered. The What green pocket it looks like. True, and Diana does need a snooker now with 48 points in it and only 43 on the table. Yep, I'd say that's snookered. Is this red going to end up? Doesn't want it to settle by the n- middle pocket. Nope. Oh, it's a little thin. A slit of it. If it hit straight on that horn, it would have bounced out and been mm-hmm. an easy little cherry to pick for Bex. This pot is on still, though. Yep. That should do the second frame here. That was frame ball there. We're kind of going into a decider here, shall we say. Yes, indeed. Uh, most of the matches it seems like we've had on the TV table have been whitewashes, but all frames are important. So a true decider coming up between Bex Kenna and Diana Schuler. Oof. That red would have really sealed the frame, but uh, will there be a concession? There is, as I see referee Daly reaching for the balls in the pocket to pull them up. So while he gets that set up, we'll step aside for a quick little commercial break and come back with this deciding frame in our last TV matchup of day one of the WineSellers.com U.S. Women's Snooker Open Championship 2023.
And we're back here for the siding frame between Bex Kenna and Diana Schuler. Hope you people have been enjoying all this great snooker action to hear on day one of the WineSellers.com U.S. Women's Snooker Open Championship of 2023. We'll be back live at 11 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time tomorrow. So that will be wrapping up the round robin. We got uh, two round robin matches that will be on the TV table. Just not sure exactly who will be on there. I know our great tournament directors, Diana Schuler and Matt Hewitt, will uh, find out what the best match they feel will be. And we'll bring it to you live tomorrow from here in Ox Billiards in Seattle, Washington. And after the round robin concludes, there'll be a little bit of a break. And then we'll jump into the quarterfinal matches. And then Sunday, it's Championship Sunday, semifinals and finals. We'll see if Jamie Hunter can retain the championship or will we have a new U.S. Open champion. in the jaws a little bit so this is not a bad opener actually for Diana she runs through this red by the black spot she should be able to be on the black in the opposite corner so she's got to shake off that last frame big frame for both these players you know, just looking over just seeing that uh, Marianne actually has uh, one frame to the good, and both of them are in this group. Marianne McConnell and Karen Lyson are also in Diana and Bex's group. So Marianne actually was able to beat Diana 3 nothing, I believe Bex beat Karen 3 nothing, And now with this, going to be a 2-1, so lots of frames, lots of importance. Eight. having a little bit of a hiccup with our uh, scoring system here but uh, I've got a good eye on the actual live score in the room so uh, eight nothing and Diana's going to just take her medicine not force an issue because there are a lot of reds that are kind of open up there and knows Beck's great potting ability so doesn't want to give her too much he has left a long red into the top right corner Great shot there. Maybe with element of safety. ball plant possibly actually it does look like she hits it right just looking out of the commentating booth from my vantage point this could go this this is and it's got an element of safe hold on to your shoes here everybody this could be a real great shot oh no she's not gonna didn't like it last minute just decided to play safe but Just looks like you might just have to play it dead weight on that plant. And it's just a little bit of space. I think those two reds are glued together. 
but then that third red that you need in that plant is just a bit of space. So 8-5 for Diana over Bex in this deciding frame. We're just still trying to fix up our little scoring app. To get you guys going, but Christian, a, a jack of all trades is definitely uh, looking into things. a little lighter was using that cushion good idea to get onto the pink in the top left corner now does Bex eye another plant all these plants you think she was a gardener done. She has a nice little angle here. She runs through. She could take this red that's in the bulk area. Good angle for the red naturally to get down. It's a good angle on the green. Here for the blue. There we are. We are back in business with the scoreboard. So it looks like there was just a little hiccup with our uh, software that we're using, but we've uh, gone back to our backup designed uh, scoring software that Christian and his team has produced. So, 10-8 for Bex over Diana. And it's a deciding frame. Seems like it's getting more and more important. Seems like that battle with uh, Bex and Marianne could be really important. Also uh, with Karin. We'll see what happens with her. She's uh, trailing Marianne right now. But if Karin could make that an interesting match, we could be uh, in for uh, a feast in this. I think this is the group four possibly this all these players are in but uh, it's starting to get a little bit more nervy as we kind of get closer to the uh, final stages of the round robin which we'll have tomorrow so uh. okay sorry about the score there something happened with our little scoreboard but it looks like everything's back with our other option the normal scoreboard we use like you said Unfortunately, yeah. it's a little bit opposite, but the uh, yeah, the scoring's on the outside columns. We need to get this fixed for a future, but frame count is one to one. So check the outside columns. It's a little bit small, but uh, points and current break, basically. Yeah, 
just in case anybody doesn't have their eyeglasses. It's 17 to 19 for Bex. She's at the table. Black's kind of tied up, but uh, pink is nicely in the open. So just kind of want to stun this. Mm, nice pot there. Very nice. Yeah, just a uh, good rest shot. Just a little stun run through. One of those tricky shots, the stun run throughs, the stun draws. You just want to like hit your object ball, it stuns a little bit, and then just draws back just a couple inches for the draw one, or goes forward for the stun run through. Yeah, it wants to kind of end up kind of here high on this red, right? Do you think she's going to stun over for this area, for this red and to the middle? Thoughts? I like your first uh, illustrate. Oh! It's coming across, I guess. I think yeah. there was too much angle maybe for the stun run through. Maybe, yeah. Well drawing there, Picasso. <laughs> oh. She has a few uh, words with herself there. Is that uh, that's a shot Bex usually makes? More often than not, that's for sure. But it didn't sit there, so. Uh, Doesn't really have a pot on. Just seeing she comes onto the left side of that red. Some top right, she might be able to get behind the yellow or get at least close there, but it's like she's eyeing something else up. Now, can she get to that red by the black spot? Mm. Yeah, I think so. Hood yeah. to hit it. She just pushes that safe. Not sure if it's safe though, because this red does go in the yellow pocket, I'm pretty sure. time no she's not but I think this red is on for sure just playing the safety I guess yeah, put that nicely tight to the cushion 24-9 this last frame Diane is able to take this one. And then Corinne is able to take the one over Marianne. This group gets really confusing. <laughs> yeah. It gets real complicated really quick, huh? Mm-hmm. Like, we'll set up a, a great match for all four competitors because all of them will pretty much be battling for their lives and we might get down to those crucial frame counts. So, like, in this one where each player is at least going to get one frame. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Bex, uh, Bex and Luca Bissell share that same little uh, you notice they'll chalk their cue and then they just take their index finger and just get a little wipe down by the ferrule. Oh, he's a little oh, nice shot. I was able to run into those balls but didn't get a fortunate split yeah it's interesting little mannerisms yeah it's there. funny when you talk to them and ask them about them they're like what they have no idea what they're doing they're just subconscious just does something else Reds below the pink. One on the right. If she can thinly cut it, then she'll avoid the red on the top cushion. If she hits it a bit thick, which she can, she might run into it. Maybe she's just taking a cross double. 
Yeah, I think the double is the idea here. Yeah, there's no uh, no really element of the pot here, and this could really turn oh. out nice for Diana. Oh, wow. Almost put in jail behind that yellow. That would have been quite the snooker. Stands up. She's got a little distraction by maybe something in the room. The room is becoming a bit more active. It is uh, it is open for business. So you're going to see a few more nine ball players. So uh, yeah, I believe we have a lead tonight. It looks like. And just remember, if you're new to the game, you're a youngster or something like that. There's no rule that once you're down, you need to stay down and take the shot. If you're not comfortable, feel free to get up, recompose yourself, go through your routine, mm -hmm. think about the shots, and go when you're comfortable. Now, if you do it about 50 times, your opponent might start to get a little bit of annoyance, but... These reds in the middle of the table are going anywhere. So she does have potential for a long red, but she's got to go over those two reds in pink. As well, if she just hits thickly on the left side of this red, she could get up behind that pink or the yellow ball. Mmm, nice pot. Wow. Definitely. And right the yellow does it. pass, though. Wow. You called it, Bernie. Good job. Well, I was more thinking about the safe shot first. Oh, the safety. Oh. Yeah, I thought she might just hit the the red thick on the left side, just enough that she can get up behind that pink. But uh, yeah, she went all out for that one. Mm -hmm. She didn't have the angle to get back down, but those are kind of nice shots for us uh, not so great players because sometimes you're thinking about many shots, but you're like, mm -hmm. you know, I can't get red. Off mean. the shot, so why don't I put 110 concentration mm -hmm. into making that? At least you know you get your color and you get those extra points, and now you're still at the table, and then you can play that safe shot. I'll we'll just keep chipping away and getting a little few points at a time. Mm -hmm. Starting to build a lead here, 32 to nine. A lot of the reds are pretty much safe, besides this one that's leaked out. On the cross double. Maybe just an extra sh shot to nothing for Diana. Yeah, I think so. Mm, didn't want the full cannon into the yellow. So this long pot is on. Little danger, little buzzy bee yellow getting in the way there. Oh, wow. Good attempt. Kind of a shot to nothing at that at that cue ball position, I guess, because that red would have been the only one that would have been left on. She's on this shot. I almost feel as much as she needs to use the rest, but clipping off the right side of that red closest to the pink, you know, there's no real threat of an in off, and you're probably going to get two cushions and you're going to shoot yourself and there might even be a potential that you could get behind the yellow. Maybe she should try to wheel something on that side of the table. No, I don't think that pink really you know, covers those reds, so there is an opening. Mm, play a stun here and then... How about just roll up against the black here? Yeah. Oh, oh almost. Yeah, I think these 
these uh, two reds in the middle of the table are going to open up here. Yeah, she can definitely cut the bottom one. Oh, oh, you mean the middle, sorry. Middle, yeah, I think just mm, shooting mm. up and then just opening those up and... Got it, play the safety. It can get up near the brown. Mm -hmm. I'm going to cushion behind the yellow. How's the length on this? Ooh, that was close. I take that, that's for sure. Nice yeah. tap on the table. I think it's just the just the red on the right part of the table. I think she's looking at this line over here too, but I don't think you can really get at this red. It's awfully tight. It's, it's really joyful the etiquette that the, the players have. Player makes a good shot. It's always good to give a little tap on the table. Like something like this for the cue ball, right? Oh, went for the oh. pot. Wow. Did not expect the aggressive route on that. That was mm -hmm. would have been quite the pot, though. Definitely part of the match, I would assume. It's because of the moment and what the what that would have gotten her. Yeah, can really turn on, but there's not really like any great color here for that. I guess if, yeah, oh, the, the pink's not even available, huh? Oh, wow. Did she get behind this blue? I think it's on. She's got blue or black. Yeah. I'd like to get that black on the spot if she could do that. And it's got a good angle to get onto that red that's near the black. Yeah, sorry, Dan. It's our backup solution right now, so unfortunately we have to deal until we get the other scoreboard back his last frame of the day. Oh, no. And there is a red on for Diana. The red that's of the two by the pink. The top one will go. If she can draw it back, she can get onto the pink. We might be able to adjust this scoreboard. Give me one second. Like maybe she's trying to will that red to go by the black. She just could come around and take a look at the table, or maybe it does go. It's tough to see from our camera angle. Diana does have the best vantage point. She just didn't like it. Sometimes you just, on the table, you get so absorbed with one shot, and you don't realize there's another easy shot just opening. I've pretty much been there plenty of times. with a 34 to 9 advantage in this deciding frame. for it. This black is in the way of Diana's bridge hand. Well, it doesn't seem like a Ponce there, if she can clip thinly with two reds that are in the middle, the one on the right side. It's just off the line of the black. She can clip that, take a couple of cushions, maybe find some salvation near the yellow. It's tough going over that black, that's for sure. It's just being a nuisance that she doesn't want to deal with.
All right, Dan, hopefully you can see that better. A little frustrated Diana was of that. Didn't get exactly what she wanted. There's three reds there. Looking off the left side of the top one. Trying to take a shot on there. Definitely come off the top cushion. And sh looks like it. I think it could maybe avoid the blue over there. She's eyeing up the red by the pink. Cheers, Dan. Oh, a little risky with that black. It certainly was. Good old top cushion rail pot left here for Diana. One of the funnest shots in the game, huh? <laughs> You guys have a, have a nice temperature in here, too. It's a nice hot August day, but it's pretty warm outside. But down here uh, at Ox, it's nice and cool and relaxing. Mm -hmm. It's definitely tough uh, to play, play this game first off, but when it gets a little bit warm, your hand gets a little bit sweaty with the humidity, and then the cue starts to stick. So as I've always created a good atmosphere at Ox. Yeah, it's only a nice 75 outside, no big deal. 95 Celsius? That's insane. 75 uh, oh, yes. Fahrenheit? <laughs> Got we're south of the border, yes. What would that be in Celsius? 95 could be up there at the high 20s, I'd say. High 20s? Maybe okay. 28, yeah. Right, that sounds Somewhere. good. Yeah. Uh, you guys in Belgium, I believe it is, and some other small country in Africa are the only ones that nationally use the imperial system. Mm -hmm. Pretty much everybody else is metric. And then if you want to get really crazy, you go over to England, where a uh, great game of snooker is highly populated, and they start talking about stone. <laughs> stone, yeah, that's right. All right, I think this is a chance for Bex to try to put a nail in this coffin for this frame. And let's see. Yeah, it's not a uh, clean walkway to the Wizard of Oz here, but uh, this black and pink and of in tough positions and these reds along the cushion as you said that's the Christian Younger's favorite shot Granted, watching Luca Purcell do it during the match was quite fun <laughs> just slide it all the way down the cushion and just boop drop in no biggie looks like we're on a break of four eight This is giving her a chance, that's for sure, to get onto these reds, so kudos to that. He did a good shot off the brown, and she did get it. I just think she needs one, needs this red and one more color to get to the snooker required stage. Difference of 33. Oh, just slightly overcut. She's left it for Diana. Oh, it's a long, long, long. Can you hear my echo pot? A too thin. Oh, this could be disaster. Uh-oh. How's it going to end up? She might have got a 
benefit oh, there. Oh, yeah, the sucker is on. Wow. Yeah, I think she turned away in disgust, but she's just got to have a look back and see that she's kind of all right. Yeah, Dave's taking a look at it just to get the spot. It's going to try to roll this up on this bottom. Oh, a little speedy coming behind it. Two cushions. Nice escape. Excellent shot. Yeah, you'll definitely notice that there's more of these high-ranked players that usually are able to get out of snookers quite easily. And the thing is that they really calculate is, obviously, they can get out of them. They just don't want to leave mm -hmm. the object ball in an easy potted position for their opponent. So this is potable for Diana, but it is a long pot that just makes it more difficult. Just missed that. Anyone follows uh -oh. Diana Schuler Billiards on Instagram, you'll notice that she definitely does put a lot of practice into those long blues. So mm, that red just managed to play safe. Bex is waiting for it to stop rolling and just kept going. Now I think what play behind this blue, maybe or even behind the black. the black two cushions. Yeah, just playing the black. How's this speed? Oh, wow. Nice effort. Nice effort. That close to being probably the shot of the mm -hmm. tournament that would have, or shot of the match that would have closed out this uh, this frame, I imagine. Yep. But Diana with a chance here. 33. It's going to need. Does it need a high value color? Oh, wow. Oh. I took a, oh, took a look at the wrong side. It's happened to her twice. She went in. Off off the black earlier in this frame. Wow. Really tough to stomach, but uh, you got to have the mind of the goldfish. Forget about it. Move on. There's still some points on the table, but definitely putting Bex in and losing that red as the rule goes. If a red goes in and the cue ball goes in, the red doesn't come back. Mm -hmm. If they were on a color... Let's say there's a situation where we're on the colors. So, for instance, if Bex hit this yellow and was able to pocket the yellow and then the cue ball went in, both balls would return to the table. So that's the double-edged sword there of that uh, red and cue ball going in for Diana because that's a uh, cost of potential eight points there with that red. So I think this is looking good for Bex to take this one. That's a nice green. Mm -hmm. Should be 2-1. So Diana's going to have to get a good sleep tonight. Hopefully she can come out guns a-blazing because if she can take a 3 nothing win tomorrow, that could possibly help her because she did get a one frame in this match. All right, he's fixing the score. I was trying to copy Dave, but it turns out he was actually wrong. He just might, he accidentally marked the score for Diana instead. So now, yeah, 56 to 9. Multiple snookers required. I think it's going to have to be... That brown, most definitely, end of frame. Yeah, you definitely see with uh, players, you know, once they hit the snooker required stage, their arm just flows uh, a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Almost like a weight is lifted, right? And there's the handshake. So that's a concession. So Bex Kenner takes this match 2-1. to one, And that will uh, conclude our broadcast today here. At yeah. the uh, day one of the Wine Cellars U.S. Women's Open Snooker championship 2023 check real quick we might we'll want we will hold that dial everyone hold yeah. that dial we might go to some bonus coverage let's just we'll take a look a little we'll quick recess and be back in a bit yeah we'll, we'll have a little short break and we'll be right back hopefully with some bonus coverage
All right, everybody. Unfortunately, yeah, we're just going to uh, conclude our broadcast today. Uh, we really appreciate all of you tuning in to the WineCellars.com U.S. Women's Snooker Open Championship of 2003. It's live here in the Evergreen State, Seattle, Washington, Ox Billiards. We are going to go live tomorrow at 11 Pacific Daylight Time. That's 11 a.m. And it's looking like it's going to be a good match. Any, either one, whatever it is, we're not sure exactly who's going to be on the TV table, but we're getting near to the end of the round robin. So they will be tense matches, and we'll also have the round of the quarterfinals tomorrow, and then we'll be jumping into the finals on Championship Sunday along with the semifinals. So please tune us in. Tell your friends wherever you find uh, this broadcast, either be on YouTube, Facebook, or Twitch TV. It's under Ox's channel. Ox Billiards. And uh, we appreciate it. Thank you, Christian Youngers, for all your great technical work and wonderfulness in the booth. It's David Burney saying good night, everybody, and enjoy, and we'll see you tomorrow.